Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Tuesday morning, October 31st, Halloween day, and we have a widespread Arctic air uh, outbreak across the middle of the nation, now into the eastern part of the nation. Looks like the next few days uh, will be much colder than normal in the mid-Atlantic region, the northeast U.S., uh, following the passage of a strong cold frontal system late yesterday. Again, we'll be below normal, looks like Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, and uh, certainly looks like the first widespread freeze of the season comes late tomorrow night into early Thursday morning in that I-95 corridor region, and that includes in the big cities of D.C., Philadelphia, and New York City, where temperatures can certainly fall to freezing and below freezing in the suburbs to the north and west. We, before we get into the continental U.S., I wanted to, uh, first of all, take a look at our arcfieldweather.com homepage just to point out where you might find the winter outlook. We have it posted, and one of the key factors I talked about in the, the reasoning behind a colder and snowier than, than normal forecast for much of the eastern and southern U.S. is the fact that I believe there are quite favorable prospects for stratospheric warming event. These are uh, natural phenomena that can disrupt the polar vortex and basically unleash some cold air masses from the higher latitudes into the middle latitudes uh, whenever you get these stratospheric warming events. Indeed, I wanted to start off here by uh, showing the uh, European model forecast map of a significant stratospheric warming event that looks like it will really get underway by the time we get into the first half of the month of December, which tells me we could have an early start to the winter season. First of all, to go to the winter outlook at arcfieldweather.com, go to the homepage right here, look at outlooks, scroll down to the seasonal outlook right there, or you can pick it up right there in those rotating banners. But you can go to the seasonal outlook and then scroll on down to the winter outlook. Again, we uh, posted this a few weeks ago and certainly walked through all these maps and explanations on here and with respect to that stratospheric warming again I'll show you those forecast maps in a minute here right down here we go all the way down to what we call this quasi biennial oscillation I have a, a good description of it right in here let's straighten this out a little bit and we talk about the quasi biennial oscillation basically uh, it's a pattern that deals with the winds over the tropics in the lower part of the stratosphere. And they tend to flip on a regular basis, maybe every 14 months or so, from what we call an easterly phase to a westerly phase back to an easterly phase. And depending on where it falls during the winter season, right here, uh, I describe how during an easterly or a negative phase, there's a tendency for an increase in stratospheric warming events. And again, that disrupts the normal polar vortex positioning over the North Pole. It can break apart, it can be displaced, and the bottom line is a stratospheric warming event during the winter season in the Northern Hemisphere can unleash some cold Arctic air masses from those high latitudes into the middle latitudes. And again, it looks like we have favorable prospects for that to happen given the fact that it looks like we'll have an easterly or a negative phase of this QBO. So certainly take a look at the uh, winter outlook on our homepage, uh, just off of the homepage at artfieldweather.com. Again, take a look at the, the seasonal outlooks uh, right here and uh, you'll find the winter outlook. Now, let's take a look at the stratospheric warming event predicted by a European model run. Well, the European model comes out with what we call weekly mean anomalies. In this particular case, we're looking at temperature anomalies averaged over a week period, this particular week, November 13th to November 20th. So just a couple of weeks away, this is the forecast map by the European, <coughs> excuse me, for those weekly mean temperature anomalies at the lower uh, part of the stratosphere, 10 uh, millibar level. And what we're looking at here is the North Pole, right in this region right here. And then the U.S. is over here. You can see the Florida Peninsula right here. Not all that uh, uh, 
impressive of a look here at this particular week, but uh, in terms of the temperature anomalies, pretty weak pattern overall with, uh, a, again, a polar vortex that's typically located over the North Pole, but it can be displaced, that polar vortex disruption. Look what happens between this time period, again, we're looking at November 13th to November 20th, to the middle of December, the first a couple of weeks of December. Again, we go from this to this at the 10 millibar level. This is for the week December 4th to December 11th. Significant warming over the polar region. Again, the North Pole located right here, U.S. and down over here. That is a significant uh, look of a stratospheric warming event depicted here by the European weeklies for that first uh, week of December, really December 4th, all the way to December 11th. So uh, again, a significant change between uh, the November 13th to 20th time period and December 4th to December 11th. Very well could set off the uh, invasion of Arctic air masses from the high latitudes into the U.S. Uh, during this time period. So certainly something we'll keep our eyes on over the next several weeks, but it could spell an early start to the winter season in places like the central and eastern U.S. Well, let's get back to the continental U.S. And indeed, this is a widespread Arctic blast here that's encompassing much of the eastern two-thirds of the nation. This is a map from coolweather.com, C-O-O-L-W-X.com, that uh, kind of shows here some near record lows or actual record lows and you can see it, it really extends all the way from California that will increase over the next couple of hours still not at the bottom of the temperature pattern here in California you have to wait another couple of hours here but all the way from California to the Ohio Valley the Mississippi Valley there are numerous areas where it's fairly close to the uh, record low for the day uh, for example here's in Carbondale Dale, Illinois right near that record low of 26 degrees in all these uh, areas. Uh, again, this may increase in uh, coverage over the next hour or two as we get later and later uh, at night or into the early morning hours, especially out across California. We saw a map like this yesterday morning from same place, California, all the way to the middle of the nation. So indeed, this is quite an impressive Arctic blast. Expect to see some near record lows or record lows over the next couple of mornings as well and that will uh, primarily shift to the eastern half of the nation. Well let's take a look at the Canadian model run from last night. This is the 0Z run of the Canadian model and look at all this purple here. This represents colder than normal temperatures. You can see on the scale right here we're looking at uh, as, as cold as 20 degrees below normal. This part of uh, the country and even out across the Rockies where by the way there was some significant snowfall. Denver had as much as 11 inches of snow. Uh, places like Yellowstone and Glacier National Park had up to a foot of snow as well. A lot of snow in the higher elevations of the Rockies out there and again significant cold extends at the 850 millibar level all the way from California to New England and down to Texas. Some very uh, chilly temperatures all the way down in the southern Texas late yesterday, continuing into the overnight hours and into the day on Tuesday. This is the forecast map for early this morning. Now, let's progress. And notice this area of the coldest core of the air, maybe 20 plus degrees below normal, kind of shifts to the south and east and reaches uh, the mid-Atlantic region, the Carolinas, by early Wednesday morning. And, and we'll see in a moment here the thickness values predicted by the Canadian model kind of reflect that we're not at the coldest core of this air mass yet in the mid-Atlantic region. That comes during the day on Wednesday right here. And uh, the first widespread freeze of the season looks like it'll take place later tomorrow night into early Thursday morning in the mid-Atlantic region in that I-95 corridor region from D.C. to Philadelphia to New York City. But still, at midweek, much colder than normal, extending from the Rockies all the way down to Mexico and east and northeast to New England 
and it hangs on for a couple of days here. Now, we do get some uh, noticeable moderation in temperatures in the middle of the country all the way extending into the Ohio Valley and the middle Atlantic by Friday and certainly Saturday and Sunday looked at this point in time looked to be uh, quite nice indeed with temperatures reaching back up into the 60s places like DC Philadelphia New York City so that first weekend of November promises to be uh, quite decent weather-wise here uh, in the Mid-Atlantic region in the Northeast U.S. But by the early part of next week, looks like we'll have another cold shot here. A lot of colder than normal air by uh, next Monday, and that slides to the south and east. And it certainly looks like there could be another cold shot arriving into uh, the Mid-Atlantic region, the, the Great Lakes, Northeast U.S., let's say next Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. So uh, we'll, we have this cold shot this week. And it looks like another one coming early to middle next week. Well, let's wrap up with the surface forecast maps from the conventional run of the uh, Canadian model, 0Z, last night. Let me start off by uh, uh, pointing out these thickness values here. These dashed blue lines represent what we call the thickness of the lower half of the atmosphere from 1,000 millibars, basically the surface level, all the way up to the middle of the atmosphere, basically that 500 millibar level. And uh, the thickness of the atmosphere of that particular layer it corresponds quite well with temperatures. Basically, the lower the thickness, the lower the average temperature in that layer, again, between the surface and the middle part of the atmosphere. 540 thickness, you'll, you'll hear me refer to this quite often in the upcoming winter season. Roughly the rain-snow line, uh, if there's a storm around, that, that is roughly uh, the area where there may be that transition between rain and snow. Notice now as we begin the day here on Tuesday that 540 thickness cuts right across from southwestern Pennsylvania to northeastern Pennsylvania. We'll see here in a moment that that thickness value drops over the next uh, 24 to 48 hours or so. We saw the coldest core of that of the Arctic air mass relative to normal move over head in the middle Atlantic region during the day on Wednesday. We'll be able to tell that here by the thickness, the drop in the thickness value. So let's move forward here. And by the way, the cold frontal system moves off the coast. And we've talked about this for several days. That low pressure is going to form along that frontal boundary zone. And it certainly can throw back some rain into the eastern middle Atlantic region late tonight into early Wednesday morning and even some snow, some scattered snow in the higher elevations to the north and west of the interior mid-Atlantic region, northeast U.S. So here's that low pressure area. Now notice, thickness is already dropping. That 540 thickness at this particular time late tonight already dropped from the uh, early morning position to right here. So it went from southwestern PA to northeastern PA dropping south and east. In other words, colder and colder air is moving in uh, to the uh, to the Mid-Atlantic region, to the I-95 corridor region between this morning and late tonight, early tomorrow. We'll go even farther out in time, and here we go. 528 thickness by midday on Wednesday. That is a cold air mass uh, for the Mid-Atlantic region. So the coldest core of the air relative to normal We'll move overhead later tomorrow into tomorrow night, setting the stage uh, for the first widespread freeze of uh, the season in much of the mid-Atlantic mid region. What I mean by that is temperatures should drop to that 25 to 30 degree range in most suburbs along the big cities and even into some of the big cities, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, could see freezing temperatures or a little bit below freezing temperatures. Again, we're talking late tomorrow night into early Thursday morning. We'll go out in time here and uh, kind of a nice setup here by later tomorrow night into early Thursday. That high pressure starts to move over. The winds tend to slacken off after midnight tomorrow night, setting the stage for uh, terrific radiation or cooling in, in an already very chilly air mass. So again, watch out for below freezing temperatures by early Thursday morning in much of the Mid-Atlantic region. Then that high pressure tends to shift off the coast by the end of the week. Uh, right here you see kind of a reflection here and another one here. That allows for moderation and certainly 
we're setting up for a decent weekend in the Ohio Valley, in the Middle Atlantic region, in the Northeast U.S. Again, high temperatures probably back up into the 60s, places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City for Saturday and Sunday. But then early to middle next week, another cold shot arrives from Canada into the Great Lakes region, ultimately into the Middle Atlantic region, Northeast U.S., early to middle part of next week. So we've covered a lot. Prospects look pretty good, pretty favorable for a stratospheric warming event by the time we get to the early or middle part of December. That could mean an early start to the winter season in the eastern uh, and central part of the nation. That's it for now. Uh, um, uh, meteorologist Paul Dorian for ArcFieldWeather.com. And again, go to the home page and uh, search for the seasonal outlooks if you want a closer look at the winter uh, outlook. That's it for now. Thanks for viewing.